I'm going to take you all through a relatively light lift. Um, it's going to be all the same exercises I would do for a normal lift, but just lighter weight and a little bit less reps just to kind of make sure I'm freshening up a little bit for race day. So that'll be the plan. We're in my little home gym. It's so nothing flashy. It's a very basic setup that most of y'all should be able to do at home or at virtually any gym. Let's get swole. So first things first, we're just kind of doing a low key warm up. I'm rolling out my feet, getting things worked through. I often kind of view my lift sessions also as like a recovery and mobility session. So I'll spend a good five to 10 minutes just loosening up, working through some hot spots and some junk in my legs before I start lifting. I want to make sure that my body is mobile and moving the way that it needs to. It's not restricted so that when I start the exercises, I'm not doing form incorrectly. Yeah. So for a marathon, the lifting looks a little different. If you've watched like Sam's strength video, you'll see it's a lot more heavier weights, more loading, more low rep, high weight is kind of a bit more track focused, especially for a guy like Sam. For me and for someone like Connor or Brogan, who's more marathon, high mileage, we've got so much fatigue in our legs from the workouts and the training that we're doing. The load we're doing in a weight room is much more just kind of bulletproofing and injury prevention kind of stuff. Focus on stability, postural work, really it depends a little bit on the course. For a course like TCS New York City, which is my next marathon, it's, it's a much hillier dynamic course. So we're working the things a little bit differently. Um, just knowing that I have to have a bit more strength from the weight room to carry me through the later miles with the hills. Basically just making sure that my body's moving, that things are loosening up, and that load a lot of times does help keep me healthy and keep me feeling like there's a little bit of pep in my step even when the mileage gets high. So we're through our little warm up. Now we're gonna get started on the actual lift portion. So I start just with some goblet squats. These are gonna be I guess this is kind of a goblet squat. I don't have it up on my chest, but it's gonna get the job done. It's a squat. <laughs> Just trying to get the range of motion good. Slow on the way down. Keep the form in check. After those, do some single leg RDLs. A little bit of weight in either hand for some added resistance. Bulgarian split squats. So here we're kind of just gonna get lined up. Get our back foot on the bench, get low. I like to add a little bit of heel pull up here for some calf engagement. So that's the first three exercises are kind of my set A, and then I'll move into set B here. I'll take like a 60 to 90 second full break in between the sets just to kind of chill a little bit, let my body reset, grab a drink of water. Set B is a bit more postural spine involvement, making sure my posture stays upright. I'll do set A once, set B once, set A again, set B again, and then I'll end with kind of a core adductor kind of strengthening circuit at the end. Just gonna do a half kneeling overhead press. So coming down here, again, the weight is not much. All you gym hardos, leave me alone. I'm a marathoner. Making sure our posture's upright, core is engaged, hips are neutral going straight up over the shoulder. Do 10 reps each side. All right, so now we got a side lunge, adding more weight here. It's a 30 pound dumbbell, so still nothing crazy, just adding a bit of load. Key here is to keep this core engaged, back upright. Sink back into that hip like there's an invisible chair behind you. Come back up. We're gonna go to the single arm row. We get set up on the bench here, trying to keep our back like a table, nice and flat. Not arching or letting it slack, just kind of keeping it neutral. Put the arm opposite leg back. This is gonna help us engage the core, engage the back. All right, and then this one I actually added to the end of this set recently. Been dealing with a little bit of a calf issue, just some general junk in there, a little bit of a strain. So this is just kind of a compensation to get my calves a little bit of extra TLC. So it's just gonna be sitting on the edge of the bench here. Dumbbell goes directly on top of the knee, straight line through. And then you're just gonna do a raise. This is one that Sam did in his video as well. Great way to work through 
the calf and the Achilles and just making sure that that chain is getting some extra work. All right, so I'm through those two sets and two rounds of the lifting. Now we're just kind of going to move into a more of a core circuit. So I'll run through a handful of ab and adductor and kind of general more body weight strength exercises. So starting with the good old fashioned dead bug, we'll go back. Key here, I always try and keep my spine nice and flat. The low back should be touching the ground at all times. That's going to keep your core muscles engaged and make sure you're using your core rather than your back to strengthen. Knees will go up, arms back. I'm just going to be alternating. We'll do 10 each side, so 20 total. There, we'll move into a Copenhagen. It's so going to be on the bench. This is going to work the adductors and also get a little bit of course work. So, the knee up. And then you're just going to let that hip come down. Use the adductors to pull yourself up. Keep the core engaged. Head up and eyes front to make sure everything is staying in line. Single leg lowers. So we're going to go into a similar position as the dead bug, making sure our back is nice and flat, core is engaged. Keep that knee folded. Bring the other leg up. And we're just going to gradually lower that leg, bring it back up. Next, we're going to do just a knee back bend. So this is going to get my quads working. Again, this is one that's great for a course like New York City or Boston, where you're going to be doing a lot more hill work. So just making sure we're getting our quads a little bit of extra TLC without throwing a ton of weight at them. We're just going to keep the fatigue a little bit down while still getting them engaged. So starting neutral back, everything's in a straight line. I'm just going to put the hands on the low back to make sure it's not collapsing in. I'll be able to feel when it loses its engagement. That's a bad sign. We want to keep it nice and strong, core and back engaged. And lean back. Make sure the quads are nice and activated. Lean forward. And then we'll have our last exercise, which is a classic. It's just going to be a boat row. So we'll start back here. Make sure we're not cheating with our hands underneath. That's what I do when I'm really tired. Keeping the arms out wide. And that's pretty much it. Again, super simple. It usually takes me. 30 to 40 minutes, so it's not something that I'm trying to spend hours in the weight room on top of the hours I'm already out running. It's really just kind of a basic foundational lift that's gonna make sure my body's getting some extra load to make sure it can handle the pounding. Keeps me feeling fresh enough while also making sure I'm getting some strength routines in. So all the exercises were uh, courtesy of Doug Adams with Run DNA and the Omega Project, so he's a awesome PT and strength coach that we work with with the team. He's a great dude, plenty of online strength plans you can find from him. You'll probably see some of these exercises in those plans, so shout out to Doug for keeping me healthy.